Welcome everybody to what is undoubtedly one of Mazda's most important models with this, the 2021 Mazda 6. And it is highly important because of the segment it competes in, because it has to battle with the likes of the Toyota Camry and the Honda Accord. Now the 6 has been with us for many, many years at this point, but Mazda has done a great job of updating it throughout those years. Now today we're going to be looking at this 2021 model and all the updates that it brings and we're going to take it out on the road but before we do any of that I want to make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hello and welcome everybody to the 2021 Mazda 6. The particular Mazda 6 we're driving as you know is the turbocharged version which has a turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder engine under the hood developing 227 horsepower and 310 pounds feet of torque. Now that is a significant amount for a sedan which you definitely feel on the road. As far as mid-size sedan goes, this is one of the quickest, one of the fastest ones uh, available in this more affordable end of the spectrum. And the result is when you're on the road, there's plenty of torque available if you're gonna make maneuvers in sort of the highway or traffic scenarios. It's very, very easy to sort of exploit small gaps and make the most out of them because you have all that low end turbocharged torque coming in. As you'd expect from a modern sedan, the only transmission option available is the six-speed automatic, which sends all of the available power to the front wheels in this particular configuration. Now you can option all-wheel drive, but this particular Tesla that we're driving is purely front wheel drive. Now, as I've said in other Mazda reviews, I feel like the turbocharged 2.5 liter that Mazda puts in the newest models is a great engine. Lots of torque, good power, and the CX-9 I felt like it could have been a little bit quicker, but in the Mazda 6, which is much lighter, it's more than enough. It actually feels quite quick. And I would say that it's worth optioning over the standard naturally aspirated variant, uh, because in sort of daily commuting type scenarios, that little bit of extra torque really comes in handy uh, when you're trying to make sharp maneuvers and such. And the only drawback for me is the automatic transmission, because while when you're in drive, it kind of goes through the motions quite smoothly. Once you put it into the sort of manual mode and you start selecting your own gears, it becomes very slow, very quick. And the result is that even if you're flooring it and you wanna upshift, it takes a substantial amount of time before it gives you the next gear. Now that we're coming on to an on-ramp, it seems like a good a time as ever to give you a little acceleration. And as you can see, the Mazda 6 can break its tires loose even when you're already on the go, even with traction control on. But as you saw, the transmission did a good job when it's in drive of kicking down and giving me all the necessary power that I needed to sort of make the best out of that highway on-ramp. And it's a similar story once you're already at speed. If we're cruising at 60 right now and I decide to floor it, that torque comes in and you jump to 80 surprisingly quickly. It's not like it buries you into the seat either. It's almost like a relaxed way of delivering speed that jumps from 60 to 80 so quickly, but in such a smooth manner that I feel like it's very useful for sort of daily driving. The fact that you can kind of accelerate or sort of make good use of the road without getting sort of in a very dramatic car. It's still a very relaxed experience overall. In terms of suspension, the Mazda 6 feels very well dampened, although it leans a little bit over to the sporty side in terms of firmness. Not a big deal though, in terms of daily driving, it's still perfectly fine, but just something to keep in mind. I didn't find it uncomfortable, but over some sort of more bumpy scenarios, you really do get to feel them uh, permeating through the cabin and making a good amount of movement. But Overall, the Mazda 6 remains a very comfortable daily driver that you would not feel uncomfortable in in the slightest. But let's move on to styling because the Mazda 6 has been with us for many years at this point. And while the Accord and the Camry have gotten complete redesigns, the Mazda 6 has only been slightly refreshed throughout the years, but it's been done in a very tasteful way. So the Mazda 6 right now currently sports that enormous front grille which houses the Mazda badge in the middle. Now that Mazda badge houses sensors behind it, which is sort of a clever way to have the badge, but also all the necessary hardware for some of the onboard safety systems in one neat place that looks kind of sleek. But overall, the Mazda 6 manages to look quite nice without being overstyled. I think the simplistic and more so round design elements throughout, whether the front bumper, the rear bumper, uh, even throughout the sides, you don't see any aggressive lines throughout the body. And the result is that the Mazda 6, despite it being several years old, it's aging quite nicely. Now, the Mazda 6 did get a refresh, which added 
a little bit of chrome throughout, nicer headlights and nicer taillights, which did update the model quite a bit but overall the shape remains the same but i don't see that as a drawback overall i think the proportions of the mazda 6 are also quite nice even though it is a mid-size sedan it feels quite small once you're inside of it not in terms of space but how it sort of shrinks in the road and it feels quite agile to drive it's not a very heavy car and you definitely feel that and even when positioning it on the road it's quite simple because it sort of feels a bit smaller than its size would actually indicate. It's a fairly long car, you know, keep in mind this is the mid-size sedan it used to be about the size of a Corolla back in the 90s, but now mid-size sedans are pretty big, but the Mazda still manages to feel relatively small. But now that we've covered all the basics, let's move into what the Mazda 6 does extremely well, and that is its interior. Now, while the exterior is nice, the brilliant paint finish is fantastic. It looks great, but the interior is where this car really shines because if you look at pictures of the older Mazda 6 from this exact generation, it doesn't look exactly like a sort of luxury-esque kind of sedan. It looks very fairly bare bones. Now, this one, however, is a complete step in the right direction. First off, all the materials used throughout. There's Napa leather absolutely everywhere you can touch. And even this dashboard, one of the great things about it is that it's not just leather, it's a sort of suede, nubuck type material here on the dash, which I think adds a little bit of contrast because the leather looks quite smooth. And then you have this sort of textured finish right here. You have this metal strip that goes right underneath the vents. And the vents, although they seem small, I've never felt that they needed uh, to push out more air or anything like that. They're perfectly fine, even though they are a little on the smaller side. Uh, right above that you'll find even more leather that surrounds the 8 inch touchscreen. Now, like any modern vehicle, the Mazda 6 offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, although it does have the ability to use Apple CarPlay wirelessly. This is something we previously saw in the likes of BMWs and Audis, but now it's kind of trickling all over the auto industry and the Mazda 6 is one that definitely includes it. Speaking of screens, if we look in front of me, there is what is a semi-digital instrument cluster. Now, it's not a full commitment to making it just one large screen. You have a screen in the middle, and I feel this layout is good. It's sort of a good compromise without fully dipping into uh, a digital instrument cluster and just sticking a sort of little rectangular screen in the middle with two large analog gauges. Now, additionally, this Mazda 6 has the ability to tell you exactly what speed limit, and it even places a red line in the speedometer to tell you when you are speeding, which is kind of easy to keep track of. Additionally, when you get to a stop sign or any big sign like that, the Mazda can recognize it and let you know that you need to stop. Now, granted, you know, it doesn't replace paying attention to the road, but it's a good reminder in case you're becoming a little bit distracted. However, one of the biggest pluses of this interior has to be the seats. Again, covered in Napa leather, these are heated and cooled seats, but they are fan fantastically comfortable. They hug you in a way that's not super tight, but it just feels incredibly comfortable. And overall, I could easily drive this car for tremendous distances without getting tired because of that fact. And it's not just the excellent sort of back support that's available, it's also the softness of the cushion. You do feel like you're in something quite plush, but it's not sort of like allows you to slosh around. You're nice and firmly in place, but it's actually quite soft and quite nice. Overall, the seats are a fantastic highlight for me. But all in all, it's more of a testament to how far the Mazda 6 has come with these subtle tweaks. It feels like a brand new car. It feels like something totally different from the one they started with all those years ago. But despite this, we are going to get a new generation fairly soon. But does that mean you shouldn't buy this generation? I don't believe you should be stopped or put off by that fact. Because the Mazda 6 is currently one of my favorite mid-size sedans. It's one of my favorite driving mid-size sedans. It's one of the most powerful ones. And as a result, it's a great daily driver package. Now, as tested, our particular tester comes in at $35,000, which I think is the sweet spot uh, for this car. I don't think I would pay any more for that, even though you can option it to the moon and get even more into the 40s, but I really wouldn't. I would get a spec just like this one, front wheel drive, turbocharged engine. Uh, you have the upgraded Bose audio, things of that nature that you're actually going to use. Uh, and I wouldn't spec even higher into the luxury, but for $35,000 as a midsize sedan, the Mazda 6 should absolutely be on your radar. So there we have it, the 2021 Mazda 6. Is it brand new? No. Is it still great? Absolutely. Now, the Camry and the Accord are the undisputed champs 
of the segment. But the Mazda 6 goes about it in its own sort of unique way. Take the turbocharged engine, for example, with all of its available torque, that really does come in handy when commuting on a daily basis. Now, even more handy is the high quality cabin, which you'll be able to enjoy on a daily basis. Now, when you consider that all of this costs around $35,000, it does still remain quite competitive in terms of the overall segment. And with that, I can wholeheartedly recommend you check out the Mazda 6. You will not be disappointed. And I wanna thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel.